In today's video, we find out if Intel's new graphics card can do the hardest graphicsing thing, ray tracing. But first, today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Corsair and their fancy Dominator Platinum DDR5 in white. Now, aside from the obvious hella e peen that comes with these Domplat kits, they also perform very well. You can get 32 gig kits in up to 6200 megahertz speeds in the white version. And that performance combined with their 12 ultra bright Capellex RGB LEDs make these a great option for any high-end gaming system. Check out the Corsair Dom Plats in white using the link in the description below. Thank you Corsair for sponsoring today's video. I finally get to lay my grubby little mitts on an Intel GPU. For some reason, Intel went with a naming scheme that's suspiciously similar to Airbus's. Now, I really wanted to buy this Intel Arc A380, but I just couldn't because it seems like Intel allocated like three to Canada. And considering that I don't live in Ontario, I, I just couldn't find one for sale. So I ended up reaching out to Micro Center who did get an allocation and they were very nice to send it over. So if you do want to buy an Intel Airbus GPU, go check out Micro Center. Micro Center. Thank you. Oh. Wow, that is some of the nicer graphics card packaging I've seen. It kind of feels like unboxing a very fancy whiskey. Not that I have any idea what that's like, I'm just imagining here. <laughs> so I'm assuming this is like a little RGB to internal USB cable. And then we've got a bit of documentation telling us the logo was used with authorization. But what about the naming scheme? I know that, you know, they've been out for a while and we knew that they were coming for the last several eons, but still, holding an Intel GPU does kind of feel like I'm grasping a relic from an alternate universe. It's <laughs> it, it's pretty weird, it's cool. Now on the side, it does say Intel Airbus with not weird catching on fire power connectors, and then I'm assuming under there, we have the RGB connector thing. I really hope that you're gonna be able to control the RGB without that, because. Any additional cabling you need always looks a bit weird, but this is quite a cool looking heatsink design. It reminds me a little bit of older EVGA graphics cards from like the 900 series, you know? On the front, there is some threaded holes. I'm assuming this is for like non-saggy mounter things. And then the back plate is quite nice. I really like the design of it. I think it's a cool looking GPU. It's not too overstated and it's actually two slots. It's not a massive ass graphics card. And I like that this, the highest end version of the graphics card, doesn't cost $3 million. So that's cool. Uh, on the back, we have a nice blacked out rear IO shield. Yeah, that's a very standard rear IO for a modern graphics card to have. So it means this is probably not a GTS 450. Now, when it comes to the ray tracing performance of our little Intel Airbus graphics card, the specs are relatively promising because it actually has 32 ray tracing units in it, whatever that means. But hopefully what these units mean is that we won't get horrendous performance hits from ray tracing. So with that, let's drop the little A770 into a system and see how it performs. Now I'm going to plug the Intel graphics card into an Intel powered system because I assume it would be the most comfortable there. Oops. I definitely didn't just bump it against the tripod. Okay. Turn it on. Ooh, so much lighting. We've also got a signal out. That's awesome. Uh, oh, actually, on the note of the monitor we're using, I swapped out the ViewSonic display that I've been using for years now with a monitor by NZXT of all people. It's one of their new Canvas 25F models, which is a 1080p IPS 240Hz display. So I'm also curious to see how this stacks up. I'm very interested in arc control because I want to see what kind of screen capturing options and stuff you have with this Intel GPU. That is an odd smell for a graphics card to make. Wait, the driver is telling me to manually set the allocated graphics card to the external GPU, not the iGPU. 
surely it doesn't expect me to do this for every game, right? I'm, I'm not gonna do that and see what happens, just because that would be ridiculous. Okay, and there is a screen capture facility, so that looks useful. Anyway, with that, let's get to gaming. Um, that is not a very high GTA 5 frame rate. Is it at 1080p? Although, a very big advantage of not having a super high frame rate in GTA 5 is that you don't run into the stutter zone. Damn, it's actually using about 95% of the GPU as well. The A380 is working its little, its little behind off and we're not getting the most frames per second here. Wow, Battlefield 5 seems to be on some interesting drugs here. Uh, let's give it a minute. Well, it's definitely improved, but we still get these very heavy stutters. Maybe DirectX 12 has something to do with it. So let me switch it to DX11 and see what that does. Okay, so we're in DirectX 11 now and it's stopped having seizures. It's actually running very smoothly now. Uh, and we're getting quite a high frame rate. Except for just now, we've been averaging above 120 frames per second. And then in terms of power draw and temperatures, it's actually looking pretty good. We're hovering at around 140 watts and temperature wise, we're sitting in the low 60s. That is with a very low ambient temperature though. Now I'm really hoping this DirectX 12 stutter apocalypse thing is a Battlefield 5 specific problem because otherwise the ray tracing tests for this video are not gonna go well. Right after saying that, I went and tested Battlefield 5's ray tracing performance. And aside from some of the most stuttery gaming I've ever seen, we actually didn't lose that much gaming performance enabling ray tracing in DX12. So that's a promising start in a delusional way. After that very interesting result, I tried to get Cyberpunk to launch, which just refused to. Black Mesa also didn't want to launch, which I just tried on a whim. But luckily, Quake 2 RTX was more than happy to play ball. It's Quake 2 time. You can see that we are getting hella frame rates. Almost a thousand, but this is without any of our rays being traced. So we do need to give that a shot. Whoa, this is going very well. That is a high frame rate for Quake 2's RTX setting. And it's, it's set quite high here as well, but we're well over 100 frames per second. This is promising not even just in a delusional way. That's Good stuff, little Airbus graphics card. Next, I wanted to try Control, but Epic Games refused to download it because it was having a bit of a compatibility kerfuffle with the Intel graphics card. Apparently, the system didn't support any of my other games on Epic Games either. Luckily, a workaround wasn't too difficult. I just had to download a bit of software that bypasses the minimum requirement thing, which got the game to install, but there was one more problem. So when launching Control, it doesn't give you the option to launch in DX12 for some reason. So you have to go into the game file and specifically find the DX12 EXE. That's not annoying at all. Wow, that is running the crap out of control at medium settings. Moving over to ray tracing with medium settings, we actually didn't lose that many frames per second. It's handling this surprisingly well. Let's see what happens when we crank it up to high ray tracing. Again, this is very impressive. We're still consistently sitting over 60 frames per second, despite having cranked ray tracing settings in control. Now, if only it was less of a faff to get running, and I'm not quite sure this balances out what happened with Battlefield 5 earlier, but still, it's, it's impressive. So this is Fortnite running at 1080p competitive settings. It's not a super crazy high frame rate, but it's nice and responsive. And <laughs> you know, it's difficult to complain when you have 200 frames per second. Uh, there is the occasional stutter, but that that's just Fortnite things, I guess. Okay, let's turn ray tracing on. Wait, is ray tracing on? I feel like we've not lost any frame rate here. Yeah, it's on. It's even like reasonably on. I'm confused. Are settings just not applying or is this thing just a complete ray tracing beast? I feel like it looks different. Let's just do epic apply. Ooh, okay. Well, setting everything to epic has just broken the world. 
So I think the settings are applying, it's just a beast, apparently. Now I'm not sure if this actually is ray traced, but if it is, it's mighty impressive. Now before we try some ray traced crisis, let me just quickly try and get Cyberpunk running again. Okay, it works, nice. All I did was restart the PC and that seems to have cured it for some reason. At 1080p medium settings, this is not the greatest result. And for some reason, the power draw is down quite a bit from some of the other games. We're just drawing about 130 watts on the GPU, although I'm not sure how accurate that is. Not super promising in terms of ray tracing performance, but let's give it a try. <laughs> Okay, 30 frames per second, but in all fairness, before we turned medium ray tracing on, we were sitting in the high 40s, so we haven't actually lost that much frame rate, and at least the graphics card's drawing more power now. Let's try psycho ray tracing for the hell of it. Okay, jumping to psycho, we've barely lost any additional frame rate. We're only getting about 24 frames per second, depending on where we're driving around, but this kind of makes me think that once they sort the drivers and optimization out, this Airbus is going to be a real monster. Now, I'm also curious to see what happens when we use Fidelity FX with the Intel GPU. So I'm going to put this on quality. Yo, I love that. I love that Fidelity FX works on graphics cards that aren't just AMD GPUs, you know? That's really cool. What happens if we do like super fidelity FX? Ultra performance. Whoa, that is shocking. That is really, that is really crazy looking. I love all the smearing behind everything. It looks like we're role playing as a VA exosketch. <laughs> Now, of course, we also have to try Crisis Remaster. I did get a driver warning that apparently ray tracing isn't supported with this graphics card, but it does let us turn it on. So I guess we'll figure that out in a bit what happens there. But let's get into the game and see. Wow, okay, at high settings, we are getting many of the frames per second. Okay, so the frame rate is kind of all over the place. Uh, we're, we're averaging over 100, but occasionally it dips to under 60. So let's see what happens if we turn ray tracing on. Again, it did tell us that it doesn't want ray tracing to happen. So it'll be interesting to see if it lets us turn it on. Now, if I remember correctly, visually ray tracing makes no difference in Crisis Remaster. So we're gonna have to rely entirely on the frame rate to determine if it's on and it's lower. So I'm assuming there's ray tracing happening now. Okay, then finally, I do also just want to do the can it run crisis mode. Uh, I love the fact that there's actually a setting that implies that the game is terribly optimized, but <laughs> that's, that's fine, you know, whatever. We've now lost more than half our frame rate and the stutters don't take us down to 60 frames per second anymore. They take us down to like 10. Oh, look at it stuttering. And with that very eloquent description of the stuttering, it brings me to the end of my first video with an Intel GPU, which was interesting. It was kind of like living with a very smart drug addict. Sometimes it has these moments of clarity where it runs very well, but other times it goes on a stuttering binge and then refuses to play random games. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider watching another one. A suggestion will pop up in a second. And until the next video, bye-bye.